Number one says a function F gives the temperature in degrees Celsius T hours after midnight. So let's break down that sentence right there. So when it says a function gives, so that means that the function is giving out this thing. So this is going to be your output. Then it says, so function F gives the temperature in degrees Celsius T hours after midnight. So then this is going to be your input. So the function gives out the temperature when we know the hours after midnight. So if we were to kind of write that, that would look like this. Um, our input is the hours after midnight and our output is the temp. Now it wants us to choose the equation that represents this statement. At 1.30, the temperature was 20 degrees Celsius. Now, the output is obviously 20, okay? Our output, our temperature is 20. The input isn't quite as obvious because this is 1.30 p.m. It doesn't say that T is just the time. It says T is the hours after midnight. So we want to think about if this is midnight, then this is noon, right? And 1.30 p.m. is right here. So from midnight to noon is 12 hours. And then from noon to 1.30 is 1.5 hours. So that means that our time after midnight when it's 1.30 in the afternoon is 13.5 hours after midnight. So then that's gonna be our input is that 13.5. So our function is actually gonna have 13.5 as the input and it's gonna have 20 degrees Celsius as the output. So that is letter D. Number two. Tyler filled up his bathtub, took a bath, and then drained the tub. The function B gives the depth of the water. So this is your output. The function is giving this back. Um, so the depth of the water is the output in inches, T minutes after Tyler began to fill the bathtub. So that time in minutes is your input. So explain the meaning of each of these. So let me just again write this little, oops, it's not F this time, it's B. So the function is B. And so the input of this function, again, is the T minutes after he began filling the bathtub. So this is kind of your time or your minutes. And the output is the depth. So this first one says that um, after, oops, the input is zero. So after zero minutes, the depth is zero. So after zero minutes, the water depth is zero inches. Part B says um, that, now this one doesn't give us what it's equal to, so this is just looking at after one minute, right? It just gives you the time. So um, after the depth after one minute, right, is what this gives us. So the depth after one minute and then this is the less than symbol, is less than the depth after seven minutes. So this one is with seven, the depth after seven minutes. Part C actually gives us 
the input and the output. So this one is going to be after the input of nine minutes. So after nine minutes, we know the depth, which is, whoops. So the depth is 11 inches. D again doesn't give us an output, but it tells us that these two are equal to each other. So after 10 minutes, or sorry, the depth after 10 minutes is equal to the depth um, after 22 minutes. So when it doesn't actually tell you the depth, it's just telling you when we're looking at the depth. The depth after 10 minutes is equal to the depth after 22 minutes. And then this last one, um, also doesn't tell us the actual depth, so we're just going to have um, the depth after a certain amount of time. So the depth after 20 minutes And then that symbol is greater than or more than. So the depth after 20 minutes is more than the depth after 40 minutes. Number three, the function gives the temperature. So the function is giving the temperature. So that's the output in degrees Celsius, T hours after midnight. So this is your input. Use function notation to write an equation or expression for each statement. Okay, so your temperature is um, going to be the output. So let me write this. So we've got the function um, and the input is the time. So the function of your, your hours after midnight is going to equal the temp. So for this one, it doesn't give us an actual temperature. It just tells us at 12 p.m. So we're only going to have the input here and it's hours after midnight. So 12 p.m. is noon and that is 12 hours after midnight. So we would just write this. We don't actually know um, what the temperature is, so we would just leave it here. B, it says the temperature at 9 a.m. was the same as the temperature at 4 p.m., but doesn't actually tell us the temperature. So we know we're just going to write the two functions equal to each other. 9 a.m. is nine hours after midnight. And then 4 p.m. is four hours after noon, right? So then noon is 12 hours from midnight plus another four. That's going to be 16. So the temperature after nine hours is equal to the temperature after 16 hours. C, again, doesn't give us actual temperatures, so we're just going to have these two um, functions. This time it says it's warmer at 9 a.m., meaning the temperature is more than um, at 6 a.m. So the temp at 9 a.m. is higher than the temp at 6 a.m. 9 a.m. is 9 hours after midnight. 6 a.m. is 6 hours after midnight. So the temp at 9 a.m. is greater than the temp at 6 a.m. Then this one says sometime after midnight. So we don't actually know the input this time. So sometime after midnight, the temperature was 24. So this time we do actually know the temperature. So the output of this is 24. 
and the input we don't know. So you can just use a variable here. You can just leave it as T um, for temperature. So, or sorry, for time. So sometime after midnight, the temp was 24. Number four, select all points that are on the graph of F. If we know F of two equals negative four and F of five equals 3.4. So remember that when we're looking at these function notations, this is your input. And what it's equal to is your output. And then remember when we're looking at ordered pairs, okay, your input is your X value and your output is your Y value. So when we're looking at these function notations, right, we have f of 2, which is the input, is equal to 4, the output. So that would correlate to an ordered pair of input 2, output negative 4, sorry, whoops, negative 4. So that's a negative 4, I just missed it. So the input is 2, the output is negative 4. So the x is 2, the y is negative 4. That's letter B. Then we can do a similar thing with the next ordered pair, or with the, with the next function, where the input is 5 and the output is 3.4. So then the ordered pair that would correlate with this would be an x value of 5 and a y value of 3.4. So then that goes with option D. Number five, write three statements that are true about this situation. Use function notation. Um, the function f gives the distance of a dog from a post in feet as a function of time t in seconds since its owner left. Use the equal sign at least one state one time and use the less than sign in another statement. So you can do whatever you want here. There's going to be a lot of different options. Um, I'm just going to utilize these ordered pairs that they put on or these big dots that they put on here. You don't have to. I'm just going to. Um, so for this first dot, we know that the input and let me actually, I'm going to put some color on here too to help. So the input is the horizontal axis and the output is the vertical axis. So when I'm writing this ordered pair here or this function notation for this one, okay, the input value is zero. So I'm at zero and my output is is somewhere between 1 and 2. So I'm just going to put 1.5. So f of 0 equals 1.5. So that means after 0 seconds, this dog is 1.5 feet from the fence post. Then I could write another um, statement for this ordered pair, or for this point here. And so f of in this case, 60, so that input is 60. The output is at four. So if we go at 60 up to the graph and then over to the vertical axis, it's at four. So these are two um, statements that we wrote with equal signs. And now I'm just gonna use these and put them together with the less than symbol. So I'm just going to put it like this. So which one is less? Well, this top one is less. So f of 0 is less than f of 60 because f of 0 is 1.5 and f of 60 is 4. So this would be another statement that you could write that uses the less than symbol. And again, there's lots and lots and lots of statements you could have written here. Um, I just chose to write them using the bolded points that they labeled on the diagram. Number six, Elena writes 
the equation 6x plus 2y equals 12. Write a new equation that has exactly one solution in common with Elena's. So this means that, the, that her line and the line we write have to cross. So they need to not be parallel lines, which means they need to have different slopes. And the slopes are impacted by these two numbers. So I just need to change either of them. I mean, I could change both, but I'm just going to change one of them. So I'm just going to change the 6 to a 5. So 5x plus 2y equals 12. This is definitely going to have a different slope than this one, meaning they're going to cross at one point. If we want them to have no solutions, this means that they need to have the same slope, but a different starting point. Okay, because then that would mean that they are going to be parallel lines. And the starting point is changed using this. So if I leave the 6x and the 2y the same, I'll get the same slope. And then I want to change this 12 to be something else because then its starting point will change and then we'll get parallel lines. And then for part C, infinitely many solutions means that I need to write an equivalent um, equation. So I'm going to choose to just divide everything by um, 2. So I'm just going to divide by 2 to everything, and that will give me an equivalent expression. So I'm just going to write this down here, and then I'm just going to divide everything by 2. So then my new equation will be 3x plus y equals 6. That's an equivalent equation, meaning that it will land right on top of the original. Number seven, a restaurant owner wants to see if there's a relationship between the amount of sugar in some food items on her menu and how popular they are. She creates a scatter plot to show the relationship between the amount of sugar in her menu items and the number of orders for those items. The correlation coefficient is 0.58. Are the two variables correlated? Explain your reasoning. Um, there is a weak positive correlation. So there is some correlation, but it's it's weak because this is less than 0.8. So remember, it's strong if this number is higher than 0.8. Um, so there appears to be some type of correlation a little bit, but not really. Does either of the variables cause the other to change? So is there causality here? And that's pretty unlikely. Um, just increasing the sugar doesn't mean more people will order it, okay? There are a lot of other factors that contribute to why somebody would order an item. So some of the things that could impact the popularity could be the taste um, or the cost or the appearance, like if it looks good. So those things will impact the popularity, not just the sugar. So increasing the sugar in an item isn't going to automatically increase the popularity.